and welcome to Studio RC. My name is Max and I am an alcoholic. I want to welcome you today. We're beginning a brand new series. Start looking at the 12 traditions of AA. Now, at Recovery Church, um, we have our values, we have our 12 values, but one of the things we do is we um, definitely uh, believe in the 12 steps and the 12 traditions we use as a, a guide. Whereas in, in the AA Fellowship specifically, that, that's kind of what guides their, their meetings and their, the, the business end and um, the, the, the thought or the, one of the joke is the, uh, the steps keep us from committing suicide and the, uh, the uh, traditions keep us from co committing homicide. Now, I don't know if that's, uh, that might be taking it too far, but there are a lot of great principles in the 12 traditions. So we're gonna take a look um, each week at a different tradition. And uh, this will be the same intro each time. And because there are 12 traditions, it comes out of the, the 12 and 12 book, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take 12 minutes for each tradition and see, you know, see how much we cover and what, what, we can, uh, what we can figure out about that. Now, one of the things I know, sometimes Traditions, they're not the sexiest thing going. Sometimes if, when people find, you know, if you go to a, a meeting and it's a tradition meeting, you're like, oh, it's a tradition meeting. I think that uh, sometimes the, the more you get into them and the more you understand them, uh, there are so many transferable principles, not only for the group, but for the individual as well. And so we're going to take a look at that and, uh, and just see how that guides us. And also... Um, how that impacts us at Recovery Church and, and how those uh, traditions, how they kind of live themselves out in, uh, in our context. But so we'll take this opportunity. We're going to look at the, the, each one, a different one each week. And so let's jump in right now. Thanks so much and come on this journey as we take a look at AA's 12 traditions. The ninth tradition. Let's jump into the ninth tradition. AA as such ought never be organized, but it may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. AA as such ought never be organized, but may create service boards or committees directly responsible to those they serve. 12 minutes on the clock. Let's see what damage we can do to the ninth step. This, this step um, is um, about not only organization, but keeping it simple. The words, let's keep it simple, were the last uh, Bill W. ever heard from his fellow founder of AA shortly before Dr. Bob's death in 1950. Aware that it means our recovery program. He said, let's keep it simple. Keep it simple. And that's become a mantra in recovery and so many other places. Um, Bill wrote after that, we need to distinguish sharply between spiritual simplicity and functional simplicity. Like spiritually, we need to keep it, it as simple as possible, but we can't be so simplistic in our functionality that we can't accomplish things. Um, you know, but in actions by groups, we find that we do need some degree of organization. If everybody thinks somebody else is going to make the coffee, what's the result? No coffee. If we don't know who signed up this month uh, to lead the meeting or chair the meeting or, you know, do the various, well, nothing gets done. So um, we do set up sometimes committees or boards whether it's to make coffee or help organize, uh, you know, groups in the deepest parts of Africa, you know, so in some of the, the central offices can do that. Um, coffee brewers to trustees on the general service board. Those are, are, those who take part in AA service work are assuming responsibility. Not taking on authority, just assuming responsibility. Group officers are responsible to the members of the group. So when you go to your business meeting, there are some people who are serving. We believe in the spirit of rotation. So new people come in and uh, that, that is the case. Um, 
Our general service office, in, again, in New York for AA, is cle a clearinghouse uh, of AA's information, offering suggestions based on experience reported to it by groups. So you might have an issue, and you can reach out to general service and say, we don't know what to do with this, you know. Um, and so they will sometimes give their experience, strength, and hope. They don't give any edicts, but they, they say uh, they'll, they'll encourage you. Um, a small degree of organization in AA, somehow, miraculously, AA works. It, it's, uh, it, it is crazy. By cleaving uh, to this one primary, to the, to the one primary purpose in all of our activities, the fellowship retains a spiritual simplicity. <clears throat> One of the things we talk about in regards to uh, Recovery Church, uh, Pastor Phil likes to refer to it as a beautiful mess. Um, I think that that's probably a, a true uh, uh, picture of whether it's the rooms of recovery, whether it's Recovery Church. Somehow it all works together. Um, and one of the things that... Uh, that Bill W. and Dr. Bob figure it out is we can't have so much organization that we get top heavy or anything. Again, that goes with the group autonomy and all of those things. Um, it tells us in uh, the step book and the 12 and 12, Alcoholic Anonymous needs the least possible organization. Um, AA as a whole should never be organized at all. Um, did any, now, this is crazy. Did, has that, have you ever heard of a society, a group, which couldn't somehow discipline its members or enforce obedience to necessary rules and regulations? Doesn't nearly every society on earth give authority to some of its members to impose obedience upon the rest and to punish or expel offenders? You haven't paid your dues. You haven't done this. You know, like, there are all these stipulations um, power to direct or govern is the essence of most organizations everywhere, yet Alcoholics Anonymous is an exception. That doesn't mean an AA won't take advice or suggestions from more experienced members, but um, they surely won't take orders. Um, who is more unpopular than the old-time AA full of wisdom who moves to another area and tries to tell the group their how to run its business? Um, he and all the people like him uh, view with alarm for the, the good of AA uh, are often met with the most stubborn resistance or worse still sometimes laughter. And it's, it's that, that bleeding deacon, not the, uh, the elder statement, but that bleeding deacon. There's only one way to do it. You're doing this wrong. We, we, hold on. What about this? And, and they get very animated. Um, we recognize Addicts and alcoholics can't be dictated to. We're kind of hard-headed, some of us. We're a little obstinate at times. Um, but ironically, if you asked the man in the street, they'll say, I don't understand this. What do you mean it's, you're not organized? Like, that's nuts. How does that work? But those who observe and have overlooked uh, th those who say that have overlooked something in regards to AA that's unique in recovery circles. Unless each AA member follows to the best of their ability the suggested 12 steps to recovery, they most almost certainly sign their own death warrant. They will drink and die. They will use and die. And so therefore, this, this, this thing that we're doing is of life and death importance in regards to our recovery, not necessarily the roles or the disorganization or anything like that. But we understand the importance of having the um, AA uh, being uh, not organized and not dictating things and, uh, and struggling with that. Um, because our drunkenness, drunkenness is not the penalty inflicted by people in authority. That's something that we've done. That's something we choose to do. The, it results from our personal disobedience to the spiritual pr principles, not following the steps. And so um, it's never a thing um, that has been caused because someone says we must do something or anything like that. Um, 
ultimately, because we love this kind of life, uh, we love this life that, that obedience brings in regards to staying sober. Great suffering and great love are AA's disciplinary. We need no other. We've suffered greatly. We love greatly. Um, and as we experience the suffering, as we experience the love, in that we gain maturity. You know, initially, before we experienced the great love after our great suffering, we were very selfish and for ourselves. But when we experienced that great love, we matured and started having love for others. That showed maturity. Um, it is the difference between the spirit of, of vested authority and the spirit of service. Uh, they seem poles apart. Um, we have a spirit of rotation, a spirit of service. People serve to help others and um, do so in such a manner that truly uh, helps others. And so we don't have a figurehead. We're, we're not organized. Each group do, you know, does what they have to do. Uh, we create service boards or committees. Like if you're going to have a dance and you want to put on a dance, like an AA dance, and sometimes we do that, or an AA game night or something that's a little bit more formal, you need some people to organize that. You, you need to you know, maybe rent the hall if, or make arrangements with the church that you can use your meeting room on a different night and do some of those things. So it, maybe it takes some extra effort. The truth is our, our leaders are but trusted servants. They're caretakers. They, they're expediters of what we're trying to do in carrying the message. The aim of our service in regards to recovery is to bring sobriety within reach to all who want it. We're not trying to make any obstacles. We're trying to make it as easy as possible for, for people to access recovery. Um, in its actual operations, uh, it discloses a society without organization. It discloses um, AA. We don't have uh, we don't have organization, um, and we have a spirit of service. And that spirit of service within this organization that has very little organization is a true fellowship. A true fellowship is what the picture of um, of what AA really is all about. And that true fellowship um, doesn't need to be organized per se. We talk about stay in the middle of the herd because it's hard to get picked off and you're in the, in the middle of the herd. But in the herd, that's sort of what AA groups are like. They're like herds. Um, there's, there's not a lot of organization. I mean, like they're together and they're kind of moving in the same direction generally and they're trying to stay together. Um, but they're not hampered by... Uh, undue or unneeded organization. So what is this, this, this tradition all about? Simply, AA shouldn't be a formal organization. Um, it can have committees, boards to handle things, but we want to keep it simplistic. We want to keep it without uh, organization because we'll keep adding layers and layers and getting complicated and get, getting uh, top heavy and that, that would be a mistake. Uh, a biblical concept that goes along with this is for where two or three gather in my name, there I will be with them. Matthew 18, 20. We've used that actually for a previous tradition as well. Um, but, you know, it, we don't have to have this formal organization when a couple people uh, come together. And uh, again, it's that the spiritual simplicity versus some of our functional uh, simplicity. Sometimes we need some something to uh, to make sure our where we have a functionality. Um, the spiritual concept here is there is an emphasis on simplicity and community driven actions that ensure flexibility and responsiveness to members' needs. Um, we are a, you know, a very flat organization. There are all these groups and there's not a figurehead. It's not like 
top down. It's just we're flat. We have some service organizations above to help, but for the most part, our 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 structure is flat. There's a group. It's autonomous. It can make its own decisions as long as it doesn't affect AA as a whole. All those other groups, and we're not going to organize. We're not going to uh, do organization that uh, that will in some way make it harder for the drunk or the addict to get sober. Um, that's really the key to all of this. So um, AA as such ought never be organized. And th that principle of keep it simple. And I sometimes hear kiss, keep it simple. And I like to say sweetheart. Some people like to say something else. I like to try to keep it positive. But keeping it simple as an individual in our lives is is helpful. Keeping it simple in our groups is is helpful as well. So hopefully that helps a little bit with the ninth step. Um, again, this is one of those, those uh, not ninth step, ninth tradition. As we're talking about this tradition, uh, it's, you know, it's not overly glamorous, uh, but it's, it's functional. And so hopefully that helps you. If you got some comments on the ninth step, any area I might know how to hit, feel free, leave a comment, uh, start a discussion. That would be great. Um, we encourage you to like, to follow, subscribe, you know, do your thing. Help us with the, the footprint of Studio RC continue to go out further and further. And so uh, we thank you for coming to Studio RC uh, and being a part of the tradition series. Uh, hopefully uh, this episode was encouraging to you and helpful, maybe informative for you. And so uh, we remind you, Recovery Church, there's 12 steps, but there's one goal. God bless, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.